Hey guys, it's Angelo and welcome to the first look of the Beast Mastery Hunter on the World of Warcraft Shadowlands Alpha. The BM has received quite a few changes, from talents to reworked ones as well as former abilities making their return to the toolkit in Shadowlands. The Beast Master definitely looks fun and engaging, very similar to the version of itself in Battle for Azeroth with a few flavors of Legion. Now in comparison, the Beastmaster has lost a bit of the powerful feeling it currently has in BFA, but this has of course a lot to do with the removal of Azerite traits and essences, and even more so with the removal of corruption. More on that in just a bit. Even though there are some cool, positive aspects to the Beastmaster coming in Shadowlands, there are also some downsides, which will certainly need to be looked at in the upcoming weeks and months. Now in this video, we'll be going over everything that is in effect up to this point, so ability changes, removals and implementations, as well as talent changes and updates to the spec specific aspects of the Beast Mastery Hunter. At the end, I'll give you some personal feedback of how the spec plays itself on the alpha currently with its pros and cons, in hopes that not only you, but also some developers will take note. If you would like to stay updated on the content of this channel, be sure to subscribe, as I'll be posting a load of Shadowlands videos in the upcoming weeks and months, giving you as much information as possible. If you want to join the discussion with all things related to Shadowlands or of course current World of Warcraft, be sure to join our Discord, with the link of course in the description box below. Good, now that being said, and without any further ado, let's go right ahead and have a look. Good. Starting us off, let's have a look at the abilities returning to the Hunter as a class, as well as our Covenant abilities. All Hunter specs will have baseline abilities in Shadowlands, very similar to earlier versions of World of Warcraft. Currently, those are Arcane Shot, Steady Shot, Kill Shot, Tranquilizing Shot, Hunter's Mark, Eyes of the Beast, Scare Beast, and Wing Clip, which for the Beastmaster and the Marksman Hunter is our regular concussive shot. The ability is of course exactly the same though. Interesting for the Beastmaster will also be the increase in stable size, which is pretty nice as you'll be able to tame and collect a lot more companions. It's definitely a nice feeling to have that many abilities returned to the toolkit, and the Beastmaster certainly feels as if the toolkit has an answer for pretty much everything the game could possibly throw at you. Very similar to previous expansions, yet vastly different from many other classes and specs which do not have the same amount of abilities returning to the game. Some factors which limit other specs also limit the Beastmaster, namely the AoE changes which will come into play in Shadowlands. Multishot and Beast Leaf will now only strike up to 5 targets, which will cap most of your AoE potential at that amount of enemies. Talents which are entirely reliant upon the fact that they excel at heavy AoE will not be affected by this exact change, for the Beastmaster those would be Stomp, Stampede and Barrage. Reviving your pet now takes 6 seconds up from 2, and the final change for all hunters comes in form of Misdirect, which will return with the change that it now doesn't start to transfer threat until you actually attack. So far so good. Now, when looking at our Covenant abilities, which are a big factor in Shadowlands, we also have some very interesting abilities come to the game. From the Kyrians, we get the Resonating Arrow, which fires a Resonating Arrow to the target location and then fills the area with Anima for 10 seconds. This will cause your auto attacks to ignore any line of sight in that area, as well as giving you a 30% chance or rather increased chance to critically strike against any enemy within that given radius. Resonating Arrow has a 40 yard range, is an instant cast, and is on a 1 minute cooldown. The Venthyr give us Flayed Shot, which fires a shot at your enemy that causes them to make or rather take shadow damage over 20 seconds. Each time the dot ticks, you have a 15% chance to gain Flayer's Mark, causing your next kill shot to be usable on any target and unbound to the amount of health they currently have. Flayed Shot costs 10 focus though, is instant, on a 40 yard range and has a 30 second cooldown. The Necrolords give us the Death Chakram, which allows the Hunter to throw a Chakram at its target, which will deal shadow damage up to 7 times consecutively in quick succession. Each time the Charm does damage a different target, its damage will be increased by 
and you generate 3 focus. Now this ability also has a 40 yard range, is instant of course, and on a 45 second cooldown. Finally, we have the Covenant of the Night Fae, granting us Wild Spirits. This will summon a Wild Spirit at the target location, which will apply Wild Mark to all enemy targets in that radius. While the Spirit is active, each ability you use against the targets affected by Wild Mark will call forth a Spirit Beast to strike that target for arcane damage. All in all, these Covenant abilities are very cool, and you can already tell that there are different Covenant abilities for different solutions, or rather, solutions for different situations, at least according to their clear strengths. Of course, you will not be able to simply switch your Covenants around, but we'll go into extensive detail with that in the According Covenant video. Good. Now let's take a look at our talents, where we'll see some interesting changes so far. Some good, some arguably bad. When taking a look at our talents, the Beastmaster sees quite a few changes, ranging from a new talent to removed aspects of old ones, to other talents just being completely removed from the game. Our new talent is Bloodshed, which will command our pets to attack the target, causing them to bleed for 18 seconds, while increasing all damage taken from that pet by 15% for 18 seconds as well. It's on a 60 second cooldown and replaces Spitting Cobra in our level 50 talent row. Dire Beast, in our level 15 talent row, now costs no focus at all, while Scent of Blood, found in our level 25 talent row, now grants 2 charges of Barbed Shot when activating Bestial Wrath immediately. In our level 35 talent row, Spitting Cobra will move down from its former tier and replace Venomous Bite, as it has been completely removed from the game. When Bestial Wrath ends, you summon a Spitting Cobra to aid you in combat for 15 seconds. Each Cobra shot used during Bestial Wrath will increase the damage the Spitting Cobra does by exactly 10%. In our level 45 talent row, Stampede is on a 2 minute cooldown rather than 3 minutes, while Barrage is limited to 8 targets, exceeding the target or rather the 5 target cap from AoE restrictions in Shadowlands. Finally, as stated before, Bloodshed moves into the position where Spitting Cobra once was, therefore completing the talent tree. Overall, the talents do seem thought through and interesting. The idea behind Bloodshed is pretty nice for example, and well so is the idea behind Spitting Cobra, at least in its Shadowland version. How competitive all of these talents will perform in comparison to one another, that remains to be seen though of course, as it's simply too early to give any valuable feedback when it does come to their performance. Overall, the new set of talents should potentially open the playstyle up for some pretty decent changes. Keep in mind though that the Beastmaster's current choices of talents are very reliant upon the playstyle which is currently dominant because of the amounts of stats that the Hunter has, especially in terms of critical strike and haste. In the early stages of Shadowlands, it's a possibility that Chimera Shot will become a viable option, as a lot of haste for focus gain will be missing, as well as a lot of critical strike to proc Wild Call, which in turn would enable the Hunter to play with one with the pack. Good, now let's have a look at the spec specific changes coming with Shadowlands in detail. It's important to note here that many spells will have ranks in Shadowlands, very similar to early versions of the game, where different spells had a different amount of ranks, increasing their effectiveness or adding new aspects to the ability. And the Beastmaster specifically will see a variety of gameplay updates through this, some already on the alpha, while others will perhaps still be implemented in the future. As stated before, Beast Cleave will now only strike up to 5 enemies, along with Multishot. Cobra Shot now deals 100% increased damage at rank 2, while Steady Shot now will increase the duration of Concussive Shot on that target by 3 seconds. The cooldown of this engage has been changed from 30 seconds to a 20 second recharge time, while we also get a new passive called Pack Tactics, which increases our passive focus generation by 100%. The final change is a minor one and comes in form of Multi Shot which now hits enemies based on your current target, rather than hitting all enemies in front of yourself. Good. The other changes have been covered in the Ability Changes section of this video, as they mostly apply to other Hunter specs as well. Now, 
that I have listed all and discussed all essential changes, it's time for a bit of a discussion. All in all, the Beastmaster will definitely play itself a lot slower than in Battle for Azeroth, but fortunately, the spec has always been pretty solid at dealing good damage with little amounts of stats, in comparison for example to the Shadow Priest or so for example the Affliction Warlock, which both are very reliant upon a high amount of stats to deal good damage. Of course the Destruction Warlock currently has the same issue. Whether or not this will be the case in Shadowlands remains to be seen in the upcoming months, but so far most Beastmasters will most likely enjoy the spec, although Essences and Azerite Troits will of course be removed. The Corruption effect on the bow dropping in Nihilotha will of course also be gone, which in combination with Vision of Perfection enabled a new playstyle for the BM in patch 8.3. But let me know what you think. How are you liking the new BM changes so far? Will you continue playing it? Will you re-roll? I'd be interested in knowing and of course I'll be sure to keep you updated on any changes on the alpha. As always, thank you very much for watching and a special thanks to my supporters over on Patreon. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like as it goes a long way and feel free to subscribe. Now have a good one my friends, enjoy patch 8.3, get excited for Shadowlands and I will see you all in the next one.